My mom is alive, but mm. non-existent. Can you imagine the last time she saw my daughter was four years ago when she gave us that protection order? Yeah. I'm wanted for murder. Um, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Sitle Sibisi, and <laughs> I am the mother to two beautiful children. My firstborn, Mkanyisi, affectionately known as MK, and my second daughter, who is now an angel, Tepang Kanyisile, affectionately known as TK. Um, the reason why I say she's an angel is because by now, if you have been following our story, you would know that Tepang has ascended to be with the Lord. Um, in our eyes or in my eyes, my son's eyes, family's eyes, it was just too sudden. It was premature, but it happened. And that is why in her memory, we have created a space, a safe space for parents, moms, families, caregivers, survivors um, of people who suffer from brain aneurysm because my daughter TK passed on due to a ruptured aneurysm in the brain. But today we are here in studio. Um, <laughs> I've got a very good friend of mine who is not just a friend, but a pastor and um, a confidant. And she is one of the pastors who was at my daughter's funeral. In fact, not just at my daughter's funeral, she helped to conduct the whole funeral service alongside uh, Umam Ngobo, Nobab Ngobo, uh, from Yashalim Tlope. And then, so I had three pastors there who helped to conduct my daughter's burial. So today, we're just gonna have a conversation about certain things that she felt <laughs> that we still needed to talk about. So I'll allow her to introduce, to introduce herself. Hello everyone. My name is Shalom, Sister Shalom. I'm a youth pastor, philanthropist, and yeah, I'm a mom to two boys as well. Mm. And you know, um, it was a very saddening day. I remember a mom over and I went to the bathroom. Did you see us when you were speaking? When was this? When you were giving your speech. Where? At the funeral. Okay. We stood up because I couldn't hold my tears and she was like, you cannot cry here. Okay. You can't. I was breaking down. I was getting into, you know, that mode of I'm losing my mind because there was, you know, you were talking about a, um, TK and you were crying, you know, and saying my daughter was not sick. She wasn't sick. My daughter was not sick. And, you know, it raised a lot of questions, mm. I don't want to lie. Even where I am sitting right now, I'm asking myself, um, they say there's no symptoms. Um, and, you know, for kids that are under the age of 15, because I read about um, the, the disease. Brain aneurysm, yeah. Yeah, and... For me, it raised questions. Didn't it raise questions for you? It did. For me, it was, why me? Uh, Besides, why, 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 why must it happen to my child? No, besides it happening to your child, don't you think, perhaps, why is it three days after the BCC um, brought, um, documentary, why is it at that time, three days after the BBC documentary came out, <laughs> why why is it why did it why did it happen exactly that time when it was hyped and everybody was getting to know the truth, and everybody was you know, it, it, it I'm not saying TK died because of or in spite of mm -hmm. but i'm just saying it questions the timing the timing yeah i think um 
This is a question that I've, I've, I've sat and pondered on for so long. Uh, because I remember when the BBC documentary came out, um, so much was said. So much negative was amplified, um, especially towards and around me. Mm. And the documentary dropped on the 8th of January. Yes. And on the 11th, my daughter passes on suddenly. It is three days. Right? Yeah. Mm. And everybody started saying, yeah, touch not my anointed. Mm. It's the wrath of God. Mm. Um, like people just had so much to say. Mm. But I think for me, I made a decision to say, I'm going to listen to what the doctors are saying. Mm -hmm. And medically, if they say my daughter, sudden death was caused by a raptured aneurysm in the brain, that's what I'm going to stick to. Mm. Um, I'm not going to feed the monster. I'm not going to feed or amplify the noise of people who want to satisfy themselves about whatever that they might believe on the side. Mm. So for me and my son and my family, we, we decided to say, what is the diagnosis? What caused the child to die? Because the doctors did tests mm. and they did the investigations. And we've held on to that to say, yes, the timing might seem ish. The BBC documentary comes out and then this. So yeah, it's the wrath of God. And that's when you always say sometimes things happen when you least expect them. The timing hurts. The timing might not have been a pleasant one, but for my sanity, for my son's sanity, for my family's sanity, we are sticking to what medically was diagnosed with my daughter. Whatever anyone else chooses to believe out there, that it's the wrath of God or touch not my anointed, if that will help them sleep at night, they must continue with that belief. And if that will help put food on their table, they must definitely continue with that belief because I wouldn't want people to go hungry because Usitles Visi said, don't, don't stop saying my daughter died because touch not my anointed. Stop saying my daughter died because the wrath of God. So if, if that will give you peace, help you sleep at night, put food on your table, by all means continue believing that. But as for me, my son and my family, we will stick to the medical reports that were presented to us the evidence that was presented to us that we have so that we can embark on this healing journey. Thank you so much. I appreciate that that is wisdom, but the truth of the matter is this. It cannot be the wrath of God. Yeah. You know, when we were coming into the car, mm -hmm. Um, with the ghost lady and I and you. Oh, by the way, we today we have we have a ghost lady <laughs> in studio. In so studio. if you hear somebody asking questions randomly mm -hmm. and you don't see the face, please. They they are very dear to my heart, mm -hmm. and they felt they want to be um, the the outside looker, basically asking questions that they feel the public may want to know, but they don't want their identity to be disclosed. So we'll call a ghost lady yes. <laughs> as you continue. Yes. As I was saying, it's not the nature of God. There is, there is no way that a good person, Christ failed. I'll give you an example. Jesus was passing by through Judea mm. and the people do not want him to pass through there mm. because you know some people are devilish mm -hmm. in any way and he was with his disciples and his disciples said these people do they know who we are should we call down on fire from heaven mm -hmm. and let it consume them mm -hmm. do you understand and jesus so said no don't you know what manner of people you are of mm -hmm. Do you understand? That to us gives us the nature of God. Mm -hmm. Whether Sisle is saying the truth or not, mm -hmm. the nature of God cannot hurt Sisle. Mm -hmm. A man of God with his power cannot call down have a fire from heaven 
to hurt Sihle because Sihle is saying this and this and that happened. So it cannot be touch my anointed, touch not my anointed. That spirit is not of God. Even let's say per adventure it happened that TK died because of witchcraft. That person is a witch. That person is demonic. That person is not of God. They don't carry the character of Christ. Because that person should go to God and say, forgive them, Father. If God's lady or Sise, you do something wrong to me, the nature of God huh? says, forgive her. She knows not what she is doing. Just like God. Just like Jesus. But if I kill you or I hurt you and they see you cry, Sitle, when your daughter's coffin was going down, you held on to the coffin. I have never seen anybody. That that was she did not want good you don't understand. Like she held on to the coffin. She wasn't ready. And if you are a man of God and you say you've got Jesus in your life and you infli inflicted that pain on Sisley, you are definitely not of God. You are not Christian. You are not, you know, the Bible says, he said to them, forgive them, Father. He prayed on their behalf for they, not, they know not what they are doing. That is the nature of God. It cannot. So, um, it, what you're saying is very profound, really. And um, I, I, I want to bring to our attention, um, as, as just human beings in general, that we tend to, to increase or magnify the power of evil and we look away from the power of good and the power of love, which ultimately that's God, right? So are we saying out there when we're sending, when people are sending these horrible comments to a grieving mother, are we, is that the way we have chosen to show love to a grieving mother? Because look, whether, whether this is TB's, uh, Touch not my anointing, whether, whether, whatever that is, mm. you as a person who says, I'm really going to take my phone and text this and write this, mm. where's that going? How you have children of your own. How insensitive you know? can your love for a man of God be that you don't feel the pain of a mourning mother? Yeah. Of generally another human being. And just just that, it doesn't make sense. You can't stand and say it's because you touched a holy man of God. If he's so holy, mm. Mm. then why do you have to fight for him? Mm. You, I think yeah. I've there's nothing negative under the face of the sun that has not been written or said about me. Listen, Sisley, they have said with the other sagas, they have said you like attention. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You love being on TV. Yes. And there's somebody on my post. Yeah. You know, on my post, I removed some comments, but there's a person, I don't know if I've removed, but on my post, yeah. when I posted of TK, somebody said, Sisley, desperation mm. has caused her her daughter's death mm. wow mm. and you work so hard i know how hard you work mm. you work so hard for your kids mm. so hard and mm. there is no way you would do anything sure it's, 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 for me, I even had to say, you know, um, 
the pain. Um, there is, as I say again, there is nothing negative under the face of the sun that they have never written or said about me. Mm -hmm. If I say there's nothing, I mean you think of the worst that they've never written or said about me. Um, I, 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 I've never hidden. I always say I own my story. I mean, how many journalists have been phoning me since the death of my daughter mm. wanting interviews? And I said, no. Mm. And I've been off social media. Mm. And a month after her, after her passing, my son and I had a conversation. And it was my son who said, Mommy, I think you must, we must tell our story. Yourselves. If, if, if you listen, if you listen mm. to our first interview, well, our first conversation that I had with my son, when I asked him, why are we doing this? He said, to, to make the dust settle, because so much has been said. Mm. And what people are not aware of, or people are, are aware of, but they just choose to ignore, is that my son is aware of, of it all. Mm. The things they write, mm. the things they say, mm. the things they do, and it comes and it hits. I'm it human hits. after all. It hits. I am human after all. And I'm born of a mom and a dad also. Mm. I cry tears. Mm. And I ask myself to say, but God, really, did you bring me in this world to just go through pain? Mm. I mean, I'm that girl. As young as I was 16, I was given to the church. Mm. From being given to the church, I was then taken to Nigeria. From being in Nigeria, so all the abuse, the atrocities I experienced, people are saying, she's fishing for attention, she's a liar, she's this. Mm. It's fine. Mm. I always say to people, until it happens to you or someone close to you, it's okay. Say what you want to say, it's okay. Mm. I'm that girl that um, then came back to South Africa, got married twice, got widowed twice. Mm. And people were saying, ah, She's a black widow. She killed her husband, you know. Um, I remember during um, my daughter's burial, after we found out that my daughter passed on um, and my family decided to take my phones away from me. And somebody said, hey, there's somebody talking on social media saying, um, you are, there's a murder case against you. Police are wanting you. You deleted both your husbands, da 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 and I just say to my family, look, whatever you're seeing on social media right now, I don't want to hear it. True. I don't want to see it until I get strength. I'll deal with it after my daughter's burial. Mm. And true to it, after my daughter's burial on the 24th, my daughter was buried on the 14th yeah. of January. On the 24th of January, I found the strength to pick up the phone and phone the investigating officer who was investigating my husband's death. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, hi, this is Sihle Seleke. I get wind and I'm told you were called and you said I'm up for murder and everything. He was shocked. And he said to me, that is defamation of character. That's the mm -hmm. highest crime ever. Mm -hmm. And he actually advised me to say, go to, to your nearest police station and open a case. I went to the nearest police station. I opened a case, one, defamation of character. Mm -hmm. Because the police and the, the investigating officer who's in, investigating my late husband's um, death even said to me, when you get to the police station, once you've opened that case or before you open the case, let me brief whoever's going to be assisting you mm -hmm. on what's happening. Because I was in tears. I was just broken. And he phoned and briefed the person who was assisting me at the police station to say, you need to help her because, one, she's not a suspect in her husband's death. Mm. She was cleared long time ago. And then we opened the case. So the case was against the, the, the person who decided to write that I deleted my husband's, whatever the case is. Mm. So the case was a case, one, of defamation of character because that's character assassination. Mm. I see the CBC who runs a gender-based violence and femicide organization who works with police on a daily basis, mm -hmm. who's always in courts advocating against gender-based violence and femicide. I'm wanted for murder mm -hmm. or I'm on a trial for murder. So it was defamation of character. Number two, 
we had to open a second case um, against the Poppy Act. Mm. Now, Poppy Act, my cell phone number was distributed on, on social media where I had people as far as Zimbabwe, Zambia, Nigeria calling on my cell phone number requesting sexual favors, sexual services. Because whoever said that I deleted my husband was calling me a prostitute, was calling me a harlot, whatever they were calling me saying I'm jumping from one man to another, whatever nonsense that was being said. And so it was a case of defamation of character, Poppy Act, and also, um, um, I'm forgetting what else, but there were just about four charges against this person. Mm. I then had to give the cell phone numbers of that person to the police. Mm -hmm. And um, the person is in Zimbabwe currently, mm -hmm. so there's nothing they can actually do to him. But what they've done, they flagged the person. So meaning, should he ever want to enter South Africa, mm -hmm. he's flagged. So they will arrest him mm -hmm. and he must come and explain to the police because mm -hmm. people think, um, oh, and another case was cyberbullying because mm -hmm. it's also cyberbullying. Mm -hmm. So people don't understand that the Popeye Act, cyberbullying, defamation of character mm -hmm. is a serious crime. It is. It's, it's a serious offense. It, it's, it's, it's a prosecutable crime. Mm -hmm. And this was done. And um, for me, I just want to, I just want to show this for me because people might think ah oh, she's lying she didn't um open a case da -da 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 -da. Mm. but those who want to go and investigate if really there is a case opened the case was opened um at the midrand police station mm -hmm. and on the 24th of january mm -hmm. and the case number for those who want to go and investigate to say why is, did she really open the case? Maybe she's lying because once you've opened the case and there's a case number, it's public knowledge. Mm -hmm. As much as when that person will be arrested, it will be public knowledge. Mm -hmm. And the case number is 560 stroke 1 2024. Yeah. It's 560 stroke 1 2024. And it gives you the name of the investigating officer mm -hmm. whom I will not name on no, this platform. Don't, yeah. But if mm -hmm. people want to go find out, if did Sile Silike, because remember on ID, I'm Silike, mm -hmm. did Sile Silike open a case um, against the person that did the videos? Mm -hmm. Really, go to Midrand Police Station. The case number is 560 stroke 1 2024. And I remember the investigating officer calling me saying, We have alerted this person mm -hmm. that there's such a case against you. And we flagged the person because they even said to me, ah, Zimbabwe, Sadek area, Sadek region. So it's easy. We flagged them. Should they ever want to come back to South Africa? We're going to arrest them. They must answer to us. They have more evidence than the police that you've killed your husbands, right? Yeah. They have more evidence than the police that you're jumping from one powerful man to another, right? Mm -hmm. um, they have more evidence than the police that whatever that they were saying there, but the bottom line is that cyberbullying, Poppy Act infringement and mm. defamation of character. And for me, when I went on the 24th, is because mm. I could no longer keep quiet. And I think when the investigating officer who was um, who was handling my late husband's deaths um, also was speaking to the police at Midrand Police Station where I opened the case, mm -hmm. um, they also sh subsequently shared with him the case number. Mm -hmm. For me, for me, that's for me, that's what gave me peace to say, look, like I've said before, this person was doing what they were doing because they needed views. They needed mm -hmm. more views. They needed numbers so that YouTube channels could pay them for them to get more relevance at my expense. And I had to accept to say, at the end of the day, if relevance at my expense will help them sleep at night so be it but a case is opened okay um you know there's some guy a pastor as well mm. who said something he said no there must be something wrong with this sita girl mm. why is it that all the powerful men of god this man of god tb joshua this one this one this one have all slept with her have all violated what violated her why is it that how did you get to get in contact of these people? I think people's problem is that they, they, they don't listen to understand, they listen to respond. Mm. Who is all men of God? Mm. Who is all? Because it's Number not one, all. the first man of God I was taken to mm. when I stayed at a mission house was Philip Banda. Mm. Right? Yeah. And I've publicly always said his name from yeah. Impact for Christ Ministries. Yeah. 
I've never had sex with that man or mm. he's never slept with me. Mm. Number two, I was taken to TB Joshua's church. Mm. And yes, TB Joshua did violate me, mm. which I publicly spoke about on the BBC documentary. Mm. Not just me, a lot of us. Mm. And that is why at TB Joshua's church, I subsequently had three, three abortions, mm. right? Mm -hmm. So who are these many men of God? Mm. Or is it because I'm talking about other men of God that I came across who were there? Mm. Who are these men of God that have sexually violated me that, that people, people, people just listen mm. to, to just respond without understanding. And mm. for me, it is, it is a case of, look, if what you writing and saying again, Mm. Helps you sleep well at night. <laughs> Do it. And another thing that I will get to you, Ghost Lady. Another thing I wanted to actually, because we're talking about Chike's death, yeah. right? And maybe, maybe witchcraft could be the yeah. cause, or yeah. maybe because you spoke out yeah. about all the atro atrocities, atrocities yeah. that were done to you. But now, what I want to ask myself and what I've been asking mm. myself and that's the mere reason you know how we meet and mm. we've been friends for yeah. the last two three years yeah. and I want to ask society I want to ask society why is it that you want to silence people who have a voice to liberate others why is it that everybody is gunning on Sile because she's able to say this happened to me and I don't want it to happen to the next young girl. Why is it that a person who has so much voice, instead of society coming together, holding hands as women, especially because most of these people I've noticed are women, are women that are coming, yeah. gunning at yeah. you, telling you, yeah. you were raped. Instead of you saying, oh, Danami, I'm sorry for you to go through that, for a man to force themselves on you, and not just any man. You know, if you were raped, Sile, in a club, I'd say to you, Bofuna ni matlabin. Genesis, you were raped in the church, bro. And mm. these people, instead of you loving, instead of them loving on you, giving you support, mm. Allowing you to heal. Mm. They come on you to say, no, these spirits that you went and got yeah. after being raped, for, the spirits I, I, forcefully spirits. came to you. Some are even saying, Sikhe needs deliverance. Sikhe is, and I'm thinking, wow, I am tired. I always say to myself, if then anyone else tells me about deliverance, I, people in my circle know I am tired. I've, I've been through places where they say deliverance, this, deliverance, this, and you just see the worst kind of thing. I think Ghost Lady wants to say something. Okay. Sure. <sighs> Whew. Yeah. What a, what a session to do, right? Yeah, it is. Hmm. So, so I want us to, to bring us back um, um, to losing TK. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So... TK's mother is is grieving her daughter. Mm. So I'd, I'd I'd like you to share on how how do you get to grieve and still have to deal with defending yourself from the public. You know. I think for me, um, like I said, the night before TK died, the documentary was already out, mm. and the night before TK died, we had some people from the BBC in our house uh, coming to check on us because uh, already the backlash was just too much. But I thank the BBC because they provided psychologists for us and they were there to check on the kids. Yes. And then TK passes on and then the noise gets louder and louder. And then I'm hearing stories of this, I'm, I'm going to cremate my daughter. Yes, some blogger wrote that, um, guys, this, there's something fishy about this lady. And it's a woman blogger, by the way. She, she, she wrote, there's something, um, all these things I'm hearing from, obviously, some family members. You might have told these ones to say, I don't want to know. But others, when they come, by a pathuga, they just tell you. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's someone who said um, something fishy. This lady is going to cremate her child 
uh, why is she rushing? What evidence is she hiding? Mm. <laughs> is it because you use? Oh, you know, I had one on my on my post. Because <laughs> mm. lady, this mm. lady, this guy said, Sisha used your her child. And the two other husbands. Yeah, yeah, for, for sacrifice. sacrifice. Yes, I heard that one. <laughs> they said so. They said, um, "I'm mm-hmm. apparently I killed both my husbands and now my daughter because mm-hmm. I'm into witchcraft and I'm using mm-hmm. them for occultic purposes." And I'm thinking, "Wow, guys, mm-hmm. I should be a billionaire, right? Mm-hmm. Would it, would I not be Dude. a billionaire? Mm-hmm. Would I not be driving a Maserati um, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. Ngempela Ngempela? I'm using them for rituals and sacrifice mm-hmm. stuff." Mm-hmm. And I had people. While I'm sitting there trying to even plan the funeral, mm. um, one, um, I'm going to cremate my daughter. Mm. Two, uh, my family's names are being mentioned publicly to say this one and this one and this one and this one and this one. They are protecting Sikhe. They know the truth behind what, 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 what. Mm. And I'm thinking, hey, it means these people's lives are that boring that they have mm. to follow after Sikhe for them to actually even have something to talk about, mm. you know. So how's the pain while I have to defend myself? At that moment, I don't even get to defend myself. Mm. At that moment, it's about, my focus is, I just need to bury my daughter. Yeah. My focus is, one, I need to find out the, the, the medical diagnosis of what killed my daughter. Two, I need to bury my daughter mm. and make sure I give her a beautiful send off. And three, anything else that comes, we'll deal with later. Mm. Right now, the focus is on TK. Mm. And... Um, that is why sitting here, I'm saying all those who wrote and said mm. the most painful things during that time, the day after or a few hours after my daughter died, I pray they never get to go through what I went through. Yeah. Mm. Because losing a spouse, yes, is painful. Imagine losing two spouses, mm. the worst pain ever. Mm. But losing a daughter, guys, it's another my level. TK, like, 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 my nana, my my baby, guys, it's 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 Trump. it's it's something you don't understand. And mm. daily, it's a struggle between reality and is it happening? Did it really happen? Did it not happen? TK is coming back. You know, you heard my son saying in his mind, my my daughter's on camp. So mm. it's 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 a huge struggle. It it, yeah. it for me, that's how I parked it. Sure. You know, and. Um, I went through a lot basically in that mm. short space of burying my daughter. I lost, I lost friends. Yeah. I lost friends who decided to believe whatever nonsense was written on social media. I lost family members, you know, um, some one, I'll give you an example. So on the day where I went, we went to bathe my daughter. Mm. So we had to go bathe her at the mortuary. Yeah. I went with, uh, my brother's wife. I went with a friend of mine and my aunt and we went to go bathe my daughter. And in the house, we had left um, two of my elder relatives and both can drive. Mm -hmm. And there was a car there and my son. And on our way coming back from bathing my daughter, can you imagine the trauma? Mm -hmm. I mean, we seen Mm -hmm. TK Mm -hmm. at the mall. We have to bathe her. Mm -hmm. We have to clothe her, the trauma. Mm -hmm. On our way coming back, I don't know what happened in the car, but the message came to us that MK is home alone. Okay. MK is home alone. How? So I think my aunt in the car phones the two elders that were in the house with me to say, how come MK is home alone? Visitors are coming because, you know, as people are coming in, it's a funeral. Mm. So every time they buzz on the gate, it rings on my phone. I just press nine and it opens. So I don't Mm. even ask. So MK is left to be speaking to mourners on his own. And they said, no, we at we at the mall. Uh, first, we were, we were buying clothes. Then it was, no, we're buying chick- food, chicken, licking, or whatever the case is. So immediately I snapped. Mm-hmm. And I... Now, two of the elders, were the, that, those were, that were there, one was my age mate. Okay. Right? I'm 38 years old. So she's my age. We, we more or less the same age. Mm-hmm. And the other was a bit senior to me. Mm-hmm. So I took the phone. And I phoned the one that's my age mate. And immediately on the phone, I said, how dare you leave my son alone? How do you leave MK alone to be dealing with mourners? Because remember, in my mind, what's replaying is when Tepang took her last breath, MK was there. MK saw this trauma. How do you leave him alone? How do you leave my child there? And um, 
I'm speaking to my age mate, remember? And I'm saying to her, look, if you don't want to be at my house, please leave. I don't need this drama. Just please leave. And I dropped the phone. Mm -hmm. So when we get home, we arrive. Indeed, the house is packed with people. You know, okay. um, my son is there. And I broke down and I called my son to my room. And he was like, Ma, I don't know what to say to these people because everyone's asking me mm -hmm. about what happened to TK. Mm -hmm. So then the two elders... Um, we finally have a family meeting later on and the two elders, the, the, the elder one, the senior one says, she's very hurt because I was rude to her. I said, how was I rude to you? She said, you told me to pack and leave if I don't want to be at your house. I'm like, but wait a minute. I never called you. I called the one that's my age mate. And the one that's my age mate says, when you called, I gave this one the phone. I gave the elder one the phone. So all along, I'm thinking I'm speaking to my age mate, mm -hmm. not knowing I'm speaking to this, mm -hmm. to, to the senior one. Mm -hmm. And I, I then had to apologize. Mm -hmm. I then had to say, I'm sorry, forgive me. I, I, I lost it because in my mind, I thought, how can you leave my son in the house alone? Both of you can drive. One could have left and one could have stayed. Yeah. And the house is full. Like my son mm -hmm. saw my daughter lose, mm -hmm. take her last breath. Like, mm -hmm. how could you do that? And you know what that elder did? She phoned her husband and she said she's leaving. She packed her things, she left, and she never came back. The family tried to beg her to say, but why are you angry? Because Sikha is explaining that she was speaking to the younger one, not you. And Sikha has even apologized. I literally had to apologize in that moment of, I'm sorry, please don't leave. I had to beg family, please don't leave. Don't leave me, please. I'm sorry. It, I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to my age mate. And she left. She came to the funeral. And after the funeral, she, I think after the funeral, the day after, I, I thought everything was fine. Day after the funeral, I think she tried calling me once. And um, by that time, after the funeral, I had seen the doctor came to my house and they'd given me medication. So I was sleeping, did not see her missed calls and she subsequently blocked me. And when I asked, but why did you block me? She says, I have never, this is her response. She says, I have never seen someone who is grieving as rude as you are. People have lost people in their lives, but they've never been as rude as you are. And I asked, but what have I done? And she says, remember how you told me to pack my bags and leave? I said, but we spoke about this as a family. And I said, I wasn't talking to you. I was talking to my age mate. Okay, I'm sorry. Forgive me then. Forgive me. I am sorry. Mm. And then she said to me, oh, no. She sends me a voice note saying, no, I'm living a peaceful, happy life with my husband and daughter. We don't need stress. And she blocked me. Mm. Ever since then. So for me, the pain was, I don't have a husband. Mm. I no longer have a daughter. Mm. And she blocked me ever since then. So it was, it's a lot of dynamics that yeah. I have to deal with in one. And, and I even reached out to her husband and I said, mm. please speak to her. I don't know what I've done. I don't know generally what I've done. And the husband said to me, she's, you know how she is when she's angry. She gets angry for long. She's, 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 she will unblock you in due time. Till today, she hasn't unblocked me. But I had to accept to say, mm. remember you're on your own? Remember you're an orphan, not by choice? Mm. You're an orphan because yes, your father passed on. You're an orphan because your mom rejected you. And I guess this is another family member that's rejecting you and you just need to accept. I had to phone my brothers because the Sibisi family, oh my God. They, they are came, wonderful. Oh, Shalom, uh, they you were saw they, them. They, they came, are, they they came the from best. KZN. Like they came as far as KZN, mm. Standerton. They came from everywhere. They are like, wonderful. My dad's family held me by the hand. They were my strength. Mm. My mother's sisters. They were there for me when my mom was not. So for me, I had to even tell the family, like my, my brothers, to say, hey, 
umtum tala pela lo wa 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 hamba ati minangjike na enyeta wasn't phoning her useng blokile till today I just want you to be aware nenga mangal till today she has blocked me and I had to accept that hey girl when your life is built to just accept the hardest punches yeah yes I see you want to say something boss. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Can we get some air in this place? So so as you speak about this family member and how family and, and family has treated you and you know, praise God for the ones who came through for you. Oh right? Asalom, yeah. Mm. Praise God for that. Um so somebody did send a, a, a question on, on, on social media. Yeah. And um, they they shared that um, I'm not Sisi's greatest fan, but as a mother, I feel I feel your loss, Sisi. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry for your loss, Sisi, and no one deserves no one deserves that. I'm not crying for just you, but also for your for your son. But I want to ask if you have considered patching things with your mother and hmm. your family at large, and. Um, she says this is important because it will help break the devil's curse over the family um and this should be for the sake of your son what do you yeah, think about media. this sure social media man. i think i can blame or not blame them at the same time because yeah. i've always said i own my story yeah. and i tell my story as it is because i don't want someone to go out there and tell my story and think they know my life better than me yeah that yeah. is why when bloggers speak i i sit back sometimes and i'm shocked mm. and i'm saying but you don't know half of it yeah and if you heard my son when i was asking to say to him every time people write something about your mom he he said um him and my daughter would say they don't even know the truth they mm. don't mm. they don't remember the day we were driving to d mm. yeah. they were like we don't know that that's not true mommy yeah. cuz that time you were, there you were was, with me in the car yeah, and I was training and my a, kids mm, were like that mm, is not true mommy that's mm, not true but coming there to was the TK, issue, it was tk it was tk yeah coming yeah. to the issue of my mom guys i think i once publicly again on um kwanele foundation i think was it 3 or 4 years ago when i received a protection order um that stated that i should stay away from my father's house I must be I must remain 500 meters away from them do not call them do not contact them do not mention their names on social media so I'm not going to mention their names do not anything um this was 3 or 4 years ago and this was mm. before my sister married my uncle so the 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 I remember going to court and my my elder biological sister was accompanied she was there with my mom Mm. So that's when it made sense that ah the protection order is from both of them it's mm. from my mom and my senior sister mm. and the protection order was stating that I shouldn't even come to my sister's wedding because I was still shocked that how can my elder sister be marrying my uncle I mean my biological mom, yeah my 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 mom is her surname is Ngosi and now my sister is Mrs Ngosi and then i got this protection order basically banning me and my children to stay away from my dad's house okay. and i remember those who've been following me I, i always used to say i speak about these things not because i'm trying to discredit or embarrass anyone but because maybe there's a sickness bc out there who does never voice exactly, like me exactly maybe there's a sickness bc who's going through mm. what i'm going through but they can't talk about it they're afraid to talk about exactly. it exactly so draw strength and heal from me. Mm. So when I got that protection order, um I would I would do live videos every time I'm at the Poison's court mm. with the protection order and everything. And I remember one day my son, actually my kid sat me down cuz my they said to me mommy we need a family meeting and I mm. sat with them cuz I had explained to them that guys there's this protection order you do sort- have a very wonderful relationship with, with my your kids. Children. And mm. I remember mm. my son saying mommy Why don't you just give Gogo what she wants? Because every time you come back from court and we come back from school, you cry a lot. So just give her what she wants. Which was the protection order I must allow for it to be granted. Okay. So I remember the next time I went to court before the magistrate could speak, I just put up my hand and I said, "Your honor, whatever they want, please grant it to them." And the magistrate looked at me and she said, "Are you sure?" 
She said, but this is your biological father's house. You've got rights. I said, no, it's fine. Grant them what they want. Let them ban me and my children. It's okay. Mm. And there were there was like, it's 2024 now. It was 2021. So it was four years ago. So that was when the last time I actually physically, my kids and I actually physically saw or spoke to. To family. To, to my biological mom. Right. And my biological sisters. Mm. And that is when my kids started going for therapy. I remember my daughter was so hurt. Mm. We went for therapy and the therapist said to me, you know what, for you to heal, you need to, because I was so absorbed by this. I needed to tell myself that I'm an orphan. I'm an orphan. I'm an orphan mm. so that I can heal. You know, mm. she, she's physically alive, but I'm an orphan. But can and I again, just the stronghold was mm. she still belongs to the church and she still believes the doctrine of um, deliverance ministry, Philip mm. Banda, TB mm. Joshua, they still under that doctrine. Mm. So I'm the one that's speaking out. I'm the rotten one. Oh. So when my daughter dies, just to, I was just giving background perspective, but yeah. when my daughter dies, when she says, I hope you fix things with your mom. While we were in hospital, one of my cousins, yeah. not even my cousin, my aunt who was there. Suggested you call your mom. Suggested that I should call my mom. Mm. This is before they even, uh, she said, while mm. the child was still on mm. machines, machines yeah. in the ICU, they're mm. like, look, we have to call your mom because whether you like it or not, she's your biological mom. She needs okay. to know. Okay. So that if anything happens tomorrow, she mustn't blame us. Mm. I was against it. I didn't want it to happen. But mm. then they are elders. They did. Mm. They called her, but long story cut short, she she only came to my house the day later during the day when she was finally told that my daughter had passed on. Mm. And I remember when they said they said to me, I was in the room with my son, because me and my son were just having our moment. Mm. And one of the elders said, Your mom is like 15 minutes away, she's coming. And my son literally had a panic attack. He was scared. And I said to him, why are you scared? He said, mommy, the police are going to arrest us. I said, MK, why do you say that? He says, because remember Gogo and, 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 and auntie, they put that protection order. They said that if we come to them, we'll get arrested. Mm. We literally had to give my son sugar water. Mm. And one of my brothers had to explain to my son that, look, you are, are not, you are not going to them. Mm. She's coming to you. Mm. So the police won't arrest us. Mm. So my son was calm and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. I want to be here when Gogo comes. Mm. So my mom came and um, I said, no, it's fine. Allow her to come to the bedroom. She came to the bedroom. Yeah. And when we're sitting in the bedroom, she literally asked everyone who was in the room to leave. She said, everyone must leave. But uh, my... One of my sister's husbands stayed in the room and my aunt stayed in the room. And I think a foolish part of me was yearning for a hug, mm. an embrace. That was not mm. foolish. Um, I was yearning for my mom to say, mm. I'm sorry, my child. Mm. Or I was yearning for my mom to embrace me and say, let's fix things. Mm. Instead, she just, she was so cold. Mm. She, she asked, she said, she asked the elder in the room, please explain what happened to my granddaughter. So when they took her through the process of what happened, how Tepang died, like my son explained. While they're explaining, she kept on saying, glory to God. Mm. Jesus, Lord, you have done it. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, go see. You mm -hmm. have done it for us. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. And her hands were folded. And she says, ah, glory to God. Oh, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Oh, Father God. So for me, immediately I, I, I became cold. And I remember my son was next to me. He held me tight. And after she said that, she said, you know, I was hoping that TK would grow up and be big one day and she would want her grandmother. And I kept quiet and long story cut short, she, she then said, Mrs. Selike, not Sile, my daughter, mm. what would you like me to do for you? And I said, anything that comes from your heart. And she mm. said, oh, well, it's fine. I'll bring one cabbage. Mm. 
and I just kept quiet. Then she turned and said to my son, what do you want me to do for you? And he said, I just need your support, Gogo. And then she said, oh no, I've got an idea. Um, if you could tell me which mortuary my granddaughter's in, I will handle everything. I want to take my granddaughter. I want to bathe her myself. I want to anoint her myself, dress her up myself. And then when I'm done, I'll, 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 I can bring her back to you. I think my mind just puzzled. It was as if I was dreaming and I sat there and immediately one of my aunts was coming. I could see her from outside by the sliding door and I waved at her to come in because mm. I wanted her to hear what's being said. Mm. And immediately my mom stood up and said, oh, I'm sorry, I've got, a fruit, I'm, I've got a fruit and vegetable business. I'm selling fruits and vegetables. I need to go to deliveries. And she left. And that was the last I saw my mother. In the, at the house. At the house. But she was okay. at the funeral. And... At the funeral, she didn't come to the memorial service. She came to the funeral. Um, but coming to the funeral, um, she was taking videos. I remember that. Yeah. And, you know, we asked that nobody should take videos, but she insisted and she was like, this is my granddaughter, mm. <laughs> you know. Mm. And, you know, we gave her space and I don't know what happened when i was praying no i think the reason why we we asked people to not take pictures and videos because so much already was being said on social media yeah. and we had a designated video and camera person mm -hmm. and so we yeah. didn't want people to take videos mm -hmm. professionals and mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. me i think after her appearance at my house yeah um the CBC family, the brothers and her sisters, mm. her biological sisters who were there, everyone was like, ha ha, there's something wrong here, guys. Please, mm -hmm. don't allow this woman to come to the funeral. And I said, please, at the end of the day, she is my mom. Let's allow her. Don't chase her when she comes. Yeah. So I think when we arrived, she was there already. Mm -hmm. But the funeral was beautiful. Funeral went on. Um, all I remember is during the funeral, at every given moment, she kept on shouting, glory, hallelujah. Mm. And I just thought, God, just give me the strength to focus on my daughter's burial. Yeah. And for me, because so much was said at social media, remember they said I was going to cremate my daughter mm. and all these things. Um, we then allowed people to view TK. Yeah. Because some people were saying, um, my daughter, apparently I strangled her or she turned into a snake. So many things were being said. Mm. And when you viewed TK, what did you see? Maybe because you viewed her, people viewed TK at the mm. funeral. Oh, mm. TK was, well, she looked so beautiful. You she know, TK was a child. beauty. Yeah. She was, she was so beautiful. That's when I got the breakdown and yeah. mm. I couldn't finish it off. But um, the Did you see any bruises good. on her? No. Because she was wearing an open dress. Did you see any bruises? There's no need for me to justify anything, mm. Sile. Sure. But Sile, um, TK was well. Mm. And you, as you, everybody knows, like you have said, she was not Never sick. Never sick. But mm. if doctors say that that sickness, I Just, can't even pronounce it's a, it. A, a brain sickness, aneurysm. It happens with no symptoms. Yeah. And you know what? We will accept it. Yeah. Mm. It's the best thing that we can do. There was something that almost happened to the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to talk about sure. that? <laughs> no, you talk about the graveyard. So <laughs> I am not aware of so what I think, I think entirely happened, but I was praying, yeah. those lady. I was praying, and this I, I was caught up. I don't yeah. want to lie. I was All the pastors were dressed in white. You guys told each other you're going to dress in white. Not really. The okay. funeral color was pink and white. Yeah. It was pink and white, but everybody was white. Or black with pink. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I was caught up and... I literally did not. I heard people talk behind there me. There was a and commotion. There was mm. a commotion, but mm. I knew that there's a spirit that needs to be rebuked. Mm. Sure. Do you understand? Sure. And one thing I know is that Sisley will not die. Mm. Not now, not ever. Mm. Yeah. Because if God would allow a judge like Deborah mm. to live, mm. God will allow Sisley to live. Mm. Sure. Because we need in this generation. Via the law, we need women.
who will stand and say enough is enough. Mm. Men are advocated for, but who is advocating for the woman? Like we were mm. saying while we were coming, mm. ironically, we were talking about how the law of Moses, mm. you know, with the woman yeah. who was caught in the midst of adultery. Mm. Why does the law zero in so much on the on woman? women? And you know, for and me, and nobody think, speaks for women. <clears throat> I think coming just to answer finally that woman was asking me about my mom. Mm. I remember at the cemetery because um, the instruction was only the pastors that were appointed to bury my daughter must yeah. proceed. Mm. And I remember sitting at the cemetery, and the next thing I saw my mom next to. Um God, next to the graves, yeah. and she's not an an and she's, appointed she wasn't, she wasn't pastor. an appointed pastor to right. to handle the funeral. Yeah, and when she was next to Um God like that, um, I think the MC of the funeral mm -hmm. was standing there, and already he could see that um, something is about to happen here. Yeah, and sure. um, he quickly went and he asked her nicely. Mm. No, before he went, I think one of my friends, Upalisa, went to okay. her and said, can you please give the pastors space? This is the space for the pastors mm. to mm. finish their work. And I don't know what happened, but there was a bit of commotion there. Mm. And the commotion, because I think she was insisting on, I'm told she had a bottle of something in her hand okay. that she wanted to throw into the, okay, to the into grave. the on top of the coffin, into okay. the grave. They, they, yeah. Some were saying it's, it looked like it was anointing oil or something. I don't know. Mm. Mm. But then um, the MC who was standing there, then the guys from the funeral parlor came and saw there was a commotion. Mm. And they asked her nicely to say, one, we're not going to allow you to throw anything into this grave. Mm. Two, can you please go sit down? Mm. Mm. And then apparently they ushered her back to the seats. Okay. She sat down. But while the funeral was going on, those who watched her, um, apparently she got into a car mm. and she started hooting. Mm. Like sirens, like it's a wedding. Like celebration. Yeah. 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 Crazy. Like sirens. I think yeah. you heard them, Shalom. Yeah. And, and you know. They say she was hooting, like saying glory to God and sirens and like it's a wedding. So for me, imagine? I'm only hearing all of this mm. now that I've calmed down and I'm home. I'm saying, guys, are you kidding me? Mm. They're like, this is what happened. And when I watched the funeral video, yeah. I literally saw that moment that you can't hear what is being said to her, but you can see but two can gentlemen see are there and you're on. seeing one is pushing her hand backward because sure. it's as if she wanted to put something in the grave. Right. And I just cried and I thought, God. So mm. to answer that question, yeah. my heart, with mm. all my heart, mm. with all my heart, I would love mm. to have a reconciliation yeah. with my mother because yeah. right now I'm going through the loss of my daughter mm. And my mother is not around. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. Moreover, my biological sisters. Mm. But as I said to you, psychologically, I had to accept that I'm an orphan yeah. for me to live. And mm. the pain of seeing my mom yeah. still preach, yeah. still pray for people, still lay hands on people at Philip Banda's church because mm. they have a TV program. Mm. If it's not the TV program, they are live on social media where she's standing there praying for her spiritual children, laying hands on them, yeah. doing whatever. But her own biological daughter, she, she has no time for. That for me is the most painful thing. Yeah. And I hear she says, in order for MK to heal, I think... People might think I influence my kids. Never have I ever. Mm. MK is old enough to see for himself. He saw what happened. Yeah. He's even the one that was telling me to say, Ma, mm. you, your mother was too much. I mm. said, but who's my mom? Why are you saying my mom? Why aren't you saying your grandmother? Mm. And he couldn't answer me. Sure. So for me right now, it's a matter of judge me if you want to judge me. Yeah. Hurt me if you want to hurt me. I'm a broken soul already. Yeah. I'm a broken soul already. Mm -hmm. I'm an orphan. Yeah. Yes, my father is physically dead. Mm. My mom is alive, but mm. non-existent. Can you imagine the last time she saw my daughter was four years ago when she gave us that protection order. Yeah. So sure. she knew nothing about my daughter's milestones. Yes, I was yeah. given away to the church at an early mm. age. Mm. Yes, I was abused 
by um, the religious sector, mm. by pastors. Yes, yes, I was in synagogue. Yes, what I spoke in BBC is the yeah. truth. Mm. And when I say I've, I've experienced the most painful emotional hurt, mm. the emotional hurt ever. And now that I've lost my daughter, TK, for me, it's like some people are rejoicing. Yeah. Some people are like, if we can't get her, we're going to get what she loves the most sure. or who she loves the most, which sure. are my children. Mm -hmm. And that hurts. Absolutely. That, that, that for me hurts the most. So for me not to lose, go crazy. Yeah. I've needed to accept an apology that I may never receive from my biological mother and my biological sisters mm -hmm. accepting an apology that i may never receive because if i'm still gonna wait and say one day they'll come around they will apologize because people have been have been trying even her own biological sisters have been saying let's fix this i said to people leave it i've tried it all the mm -hmm. protection order was the last nail in the coffin sure. so there's nothing else for me to yeah you know to, yeah. you know um um I love that you're a believer in your, and I'm going to say in your own way, because we need not impose our beliefs. You know, ultimately God is, <sighs> is our personal God and the okay. journeys that he has set for us are for him to know. And I believe for him to control. I, I believe he writes our story. And we were talking about uh, about how God writes our story last week with Usitle. <sighs> and I said to Usitle, Yo, the story that God is writing about you and of you, only he <laughs> understands, you know? So I think it's, uh, I, I, because I know Sikhle personally and for, for the longest time, <sighs> I know these stories are true. I know that yeah. the, the, the Nigeria story is true because when she came back, I was one of the people that she spoke about. Mm. too you know and this is many years ago she was way young mm. you know and and I, I cannot stop and think now what to hear so many people who are writing all these things on social media are people who have no idea who this woman is they have no idea so much that they don't even care about her losses you know they're, they're so insensitive I mean, absolutely you, you, you know how my relationship with my mom has been I, for years from home i i i know our conversations would have at your house during tea i know conversations you would have with your father i so i know so much of it mm -hmm. you know and and it saddens me to can even hear your kids say mommy don't worry about it it's not true mommy <laughs> don't worry about it those things are not true or they don't know those people don't know and 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 i wonder as a mother myself to another mother that you're <sighs> having to protect your children from seeing physically what family is doing to you the family that they have to grow up into and say no these are my cousins these are my aunties these are my these people are doing so much damage right now can you imagine what the future looks like for these kids if this story doesn't change you know if family doesn't reach out sincerely if if there's no restoration <laughs> that happens i i can only wonder what's gonna happen in future you know and i can only mm. wonder and worry about your the thick skin that your son has to grow <sighs> thicker than an elephant skin because he, this is real life to him. For Ugh. people who text, it's they just text and put their phone down. Yeah. They just watch uh, a YouTube and put their screens away. These are real lives. These are people who must read and, and go and eat their dinner together and, and be sober in these moments. Can we exercise a little bit more patience you know, my and son, love? You know. My son said to me yesterday, Mommy, do you realize that we just left the two of us in the house? I said, yes. He said... Mommy, that's how it's going to be for the rest of our lives. Sure. And I said, yo, MK. And he said, Mommy, I'm, I promise to protect you all my life. I said, no, sure. you are a young boy. You are my child. Mm. I need to protect you. Mm -hmm. And he said, Mommy, but they are so cruel to you. I said, let me take the bullets, baby. I think um, 
I don't know, maybe mm. I was born to be the sacrificial lamb for the world. Mm. Maybe one day um, people will say, I don't know, maybe my story is helping someone out there mm-hmm. to say, I'm drawing strength. Mm-hmm. I was once like her, but I'm too afraid to speak. That's why we're inundated with emails as Guadalupe Foundation. Mm. Maybe mothers out there will learn what not to do. To maybe, their biological yeah. children. And, and I said to my son, never no ways you are not protecting me i'm your mom i'm protecting you i will take the bullets for you so when people write and when people speak they don't think that's true but sister i want you to know something and i always know this. you know how i text you and i tell you yeah. you are the voice to the voiceless and listen you cannot die and tk's death was not in vain it will germinate Mm. Yeah. You know when a seed germinates. Yeah. So whenever they wanted to kill you, maybe to shut you up because you talk too much. Mm. <laughs> they mm. no, they they didn't do that. Mm. Now you are there's an army of women mm. that will be so tired of condoning nonsense, so tired of condoning abuse, so tired of taking all these hush things that are happening to them and they die of depression and they get into psychiatric wards and they get um, schizophrenia or they get mental mm. depression, bipolar or whatever. And they say, no, you know, we don't know what happened to her. She was okay. People are dying inside yeah. and they can't speak. Yeah. And it was, it's so bold of you. Yeah. It's so bold. Guanella Foundation will go international mm. because every woman in the surface of this world is going through one thing or the other yeah but one thing i know is that tk has germinated oh definitely my oh my 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 like sure. i don't know your final words from the ghost lady because our time is up, yeah. <laughs> our time is up. Yeah. i i would have loved us to go into um, and, and, and I'm sure people can do this by just going into that link uh, uh, that explains what a brain aneurysm is. Yes. Mm-hmm. Because I know for sure <laughs> my mother passed away through that. Oh. And you know how we say, yeah, uvele wa la la umuntu. Truth is, we are not uh, uh, um, educated enough, enough. Yeah. on these yeah. things. Yeah. And whatever we don't know, we use our own ways. And yeah. funny mm-hmm. how our own ways are negative. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, so it is wrong. And mm-hmm. I pray that we learn instead of pointing fingers and calling evil where it's just, just you know, mm-hmm. human nature yeah. even. Or yeah. Can we just see things in what's going to help us mm-hmm. to heal, not to kill each other, it's just true. help us to heal. And I'm, I'm, I'm so proud of you. Oh, I'm gosh. proud so of you. your last words. I'm Time just, <laughs> I said my last words when I said TK yeah. has germinated. That's sure. Right. And we have, yeah. we're going to raise an awareness. Yeah. Let women and children and everybody know about, you know, these diseases that they yeah. are yeah. there. And we know that God had protected TK. I mean, I, remember how um, mom Lillian said, that she dreamt of TK and yeah. TK was laughing and smiling yeah. that TK was not killed and yeah. she's, fine. she's fine. So it was a confirmation. Yeah. Yeah. I think for me, um, finally, like in closing, I think we need a part two of this because yeah. wow, Absolutely. <laughs> there's a lot. And, yeah. um, and that is why for me, I chose to say, someone said on social media, um, it's too soon to talk about it. You take time to heal. Mm. And I laughed and I said, Yay, mm-hmm. meaning you who's more educated than me. Mm-hmm. If you could give me a manual on how to grieve a death of a child, a sudden mm-hmm. death, There's I'll no appreciate manual. it. Mm-hmm. But in closing, indeed, mm-hmm. TK's voice has germinated and it will mm-hmm. be amplified mm-hmm. through the Kanyisile Pediatric Foundation, mm-hmm. which is for which creates awareness for brain aneurysm awareness yes it mm-hmm. creates awareness for brain aneurysm and um do follow um her page mm-hmm. her pages she is on youtube can you see the pediatric foundation um the information of where she is uh is on the screen below as you're looking mm-hmm. and send an email um if you have questions <laughs> that when we do our part two we might read and respond to yeah but um more than anything um I've always said, my pain 
has become the gain of many and the ridicule the insults the the cyberbullying i take them with a pinch of salt but now knowing that the law stands for me so if you find yourself being cyberbullied defamation of character people doing things against your will run to the nearest police station it is now a criminal offense for one to be cyberbullied it is a criminal offense for people to share your the uh, your your personal details online without your permission mm -hmm. it is a criminal offense to be for people to create stories that are not there without concrete proof it is a criminal offense i am telling you and it's a prosecutable crime mm -hmm. ask me as you heard case has been opened and other mm -hmm. bloggers also who felt to speak about it one by one will be opening cases against you because mm -hmm. people need to know when to stop but in loving memory of my beautiful beautiful tk as we close i think you should all listen to her video where she speaks about stop bullying bullying yeah sure please watch this video and don't forget to send us the email that shows at the bottom thank you very much hello friends my name is tk and today is the 18th of july which means it's Nelson Mandela Day. Hmm. Who is Nelson Mandela? Nelson Mandela is one of our greatest ancestors who fought for our freedom and equality. What's an ancestor? An ancestor is someone who has passed on, such as someone who has died. We're basically trying to tell you is that today you must stop bullying, stop teasing, stop body shaming. Because I'm sure Nelson Mandela right now, when he's looking at us, can see how rude and horrible and disgusting we are to each other. So stop with all of those things and not just today. 365 days every single year. Be kind. Happy Nelson Mandela.